Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to the videos. Another paid request this time for Tomas. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for A Dangerous Place, a 1994 film that was part of the PM Entertainment Group. Now, some people might not even know what PM, PM Entertainment... Let me put it this way. If Canon, you know, they died up in the early 90s, Spiritually, they passed the baton to PM Entertainment. PM Entertainment was the closest you would get to Canon films in the 90s. Like, we would see those Canon films in the 80s. Because, just full-blown action. The plots may be straightforward or simple or generic, but... You would always see some car flips and some fight scenes and some shootouts and, and things of that nature. And even the lesser ones, at least they gave you some action for your for your time. And some of my favorites of those would be Zero Tolerance with Robert Patrick, Riot with Gary Daniels, Last Man Standing with Jeff Wincott, Land of the Free with Jeff Speakman. Was Executive Target, I believe, with Michael Madsen and Roy Scheider. I remember not minding that one. Executive Target or Executive... Yeah, I think it's Executive Target. T-Force I remember having fun with. There's some pretty entertaining ones in that group. This is another one. And I guess you could say it's sort of PM Entertainment's take on Karate Kid. Although, I kind of think this got made because of the success of the Ninja Turtles and Three Ninjas. Because Three Ninjas was, what, 92? And that was a bit of a surprise hit. And the Ninja Turtles for teenagers or little kids... The first two were successful. The third one probably still made it's a bit of a profit, just not as much as the first two. So I would like to think PM Entertainment saw that stuff, and then they said, let's make our own, and in fact, let's have a kid be the star, and let's get a kid who's a martial artist. But at the same time, I can see why uh, the film you'd be more reminiscent on is Karate Kid. But... Although it reminded me a little bit of Gleam in the Cube. Which I love Gleam in the Cube. By the way, the, the star is a kid named Ted Jan Roberts. Who had done a few of these films called Magic Kid. I think I read somewhere this was supposed to be Magic Kid 3. But then the, there was a bit of a darker subject matter. So they changed it to this. But in other places it's called Magic Kid 3. I know he was in another film called The Power Within. Didn't make it as a big star, but he's an okay actor, pretty decent martial artist, which is what you're looking for in this. He plays a guy, he plays a kid going to school, got an older brother. Uh, they, they get along fairly well enough. Uh, Ted Jan Roberts is in with one dojo called The Lions, headed by Mako, who is one of Conan's side kits and Conan the Destroyer, and the Magician, Conan the Barbarian, and he was the voice of Splinter in the 2007 Ninja Turtle CGI movie, TMNT. He was in The Perfect Weapon with Jeff Speedman. Quite a few films, may he rest in peace. So, that kid's going to that dojo while his older brother left that dojo, wanted to hang out with his other dojo, and these kids called the Scorpions, because they seem like the cooler kids. Right, I think the guy's wrong because it's headed by Corey Feldman. And Corey Feldman's a lot of things, but cool ain't one of them. And also, for me to buy that Corey Feldman is going to be our tough martial arts villain, I'm like, okay, this must be fucking sci fi. Let's go on the sci fi channel with that shit. Fuck Corey Feldman. He's a piece of shit. He's a fucking loser. He's a fucking dickhead. And he's a fucking. Get Corey Haim's dick out of your mouth, Corey Feldman. Fuck Corey Feldman. I wish he wasn't in it. I wish he would get the fuck out, but it is what it is. And then their leader is Marshall Teague, who I remember from Roadhouse. He's the guy fighting Patrick Swayze and said the immortal line, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> until Rip, until, uh, Ripley, until Swayze, the Swayze dog, gets his throat, yeah, da -da, rips his fucking throat out. 
so again, the, the the older brothers hang out with these guys. There's even a bit where they're trying to get this bike, and this guy fights with them and wins. And then, hey, you know, maybe we could trust you more. Help us rob a place. He's like, you're crazy. But then he does it. But then he's helping to protect the people in there. He gets pushed down the stairs. He breaks his neck. The other guys try to hide it. So they make it look like uh, he ended his life. By somehow moved him, I guess, to the school. Put him around the, the basketball hoop and has him hanging there. Of course, the younger brother, our star, doesn't think he did it that way. So he wants to find out. Kind of like, again, Gleam the Cube. His brother died. It was made to look like he ended his life. Guy doesn't believe in it. Wants to search for his brother's killer. Oh, I mean, I don't mind this film. I definitely say I like Gleam in the Cube more. Can we get a fucking Blu-ray of that, man? God damn. Really enjoy that movie. But... Some other recognizable people, Aaron Gray. Uh, she was in Jason Goes to Hell, among other movies and shows. I think she was in, what, Buck Rogers, that TV show back in the day. She plays the mom. Uh, who else? There was someone else I was thinking of. I'll, I'll think of it in a bit. But it's one of those things where the movie at least has a short enough running time. It has a decent bits of action to, to keep your interest. I mean, the very beginning is Corey Feldman and these guys, his homies, stealing some bikes from a shop. With the whole gum in the lock trick. Because apparently he goes in, he puts gum in the lock. So when a guy tries to close it, doesn't close all the rights, so they go in. And I don't know if that trick works, but it did in this movie. And like I said, anytime you get a chase in a PM Entertainment, there's always going to be a car flip. And lo and behold, there's a car flip on schedule. You always look out for PM Entertainment to at least have that. Like I said, Tim Jen Roberts is okay in the acting department. He's alright. I've seen much better. I've seen much worse. Uh, good martial arts for, for a younger kid. Like I said, I see Mako in there. When well, he's trying to look into it, he has a fight in the mess hall. Some pretty decent choreography. There's also some nice choreography when he goes to the Scorpion's Dojo. He has a fight with a guy named Eddie, played by William James Jones. Which I think he was on that Saved by the Bell knockoff, California Dreams, I believe. I think that's what it's called. So they fight in the dojo. Our lead beats him, but then they start bonding after that. They even fight these three assholes later on that try to pick on them. Or more like Ted Jan Roberts fights him, and then the other guy, who's supposed to be a good martial artist for the Scorpions, he gets his ass kissed most of that fight. Ted Jan Roberts does most of the work. And it's one of those scenes where if you like this era, you'll definitely get some fun and charm out of this movie. I say it was nice to see people like Marshall T and Mako and the supporting cast. Marshall T is pretty much crease. I mean, when the kid helps Eddie out and they're like, you shouldn't let him... Why are you showing mercy? And our lead kid goes... To spare an enemy is to make a friend. And then Mar Marshall T goes, Oh, those are the words of a loser. <laughs> There's something about that made me laugh. I don't know why. For some reason, they put in this whole thing where the kid starts seeing the ghost of his brother. Who gives him these cryptic things. Which I don't know how the ghost rules work. I guess it's like, I could come back, but I can't just tell him. Those, the Scorpions killed my ass. They did this and they mace me. So, I, yeah, that's always, I don't know. I've never been in the spirit world, asshole, because I can't see it. So, I guess ghost rules are different rules than our rules. I was like, did we need him seeing the ghost of his brother? That just was kind of 
a weird choice. Kind of like, really? Really? What? Like, this is not the ghost of Bruce Lee, like, no retreat, no surrender, but still, it's fucking weird. And our lead tries to in, gets in with the Scorpions to realize what's going on, what had happened. I'm sitting there, you know, all this could be solved if the brother just said, he to kill me. That motherfucker killed me. But the movie would be sh too short. So he goes on the cover, he has to leave the, his dojo of the lions to go with the scorpions. Um, I will admit this apartment that wanted a bit more action. A bit more fights in there. Because Tangent Roberts, it's pretty much the little fight in the mess hall where there's really no winner. There was the fight in the dojo where he fights the one guy, Eddie. There's him and Eddie fighting the three assholes. I guess the karate challenge where he starts after the he's under he's with them and they rob these TVs and once again yeah another car chase with another car flip PM Entertainment Special then he starts because he sees another a guy mace someone then he remembers his brother mentioned about the mace you killed my brother So now I'm thinking, okay, now he's going to tit all their asses, but he doesn't. He doesn't tit the other guys' ass. Instead, they go to this karate challenge where, you know, some other people, they go have their little tournament. These people I barely know. Like, there's this guy that's also a Mako student who I guess is friends with. Ted Jan Roberts, but we barely know this guy. He's an Asian guy. I don't remember his character's name because he was barely a thing. He was like in the dojo, maybe like sitting down with his eyes closed. He's there at the end. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> to me, it would have worked out better if Eddie, which him and Ted Jan Roberts been bonding more, if Eddie all of a sudden said, fuck this, I'm going to the other one. I'm not joining you, I'm joining them. And then have Eddie fight one of the guys, and the guy, oh, you're a traitor. And then have Eddie have uh, William James Jones fight the guy. And maybe he's taught some stuff from Ted Jan Roberts. And I would like to see more of that relationship develop. Like maybe this is not a replacement, but, you know, he lost a brother, he gained another family member in the case of this guy. I, I wish kind of the story developed in that direction, but it doesn't. At times it seems like the word could lead to, but it doesn't go there. I like the finale is a bit of a letdown, at least for me, because he fights Tory Feldman. He's winning, but then Tory Feldman does some cheap tricks, is beating him. He's going to do some move to try to kill him. Eddie saves him. So he does come through. He saves him. Marshall T gets pissed. And Marco beats him up of like 8 seconds. So you can't even call it a fight. It's just literally just... I'm like, oh, well, that seems anticlimactic for Marshall T. And it's... Ted Jan Roberts chasing... A Corey Feldman... The both on bikes. And then they have a fight. Or more like Corey Feldman's double has the fight. I'm sorry, I don't buy Corey Feldman as the main villain. As the guy who knows any amount of martial arts. And because they're in, well, his fight double does most of it. <laughs> most of the fucking fight is either a close-up of Corey Feldman getting tit. Which is good. I mean, I guess any movie that you beat up Corey Feldman, I should pray. So there, there's always a positive. At least you get to see Corey Feldman get, get the shit hit out of him. But it's mostly his double. But I just... Also, like, he's ready to do it, but he doesn't kill the guy, and he walks away, and there's his mom, there's Mako, there's Mako's student, there's the cop who arrests Corey Feldman. But I'm kind of sitting there going, well, what about the other people? Are they going to be arrested? The other people, 
sure they get beaten up and get some nice just desserts. And also, where's Eddie? I think it would fit if Eddie was there with the group because he saved Ted Jan Roberts from dying. They they become kind of buddies, kind of allies. Oh, and there's the girl for this. I can't even say they even do a love story. It's just kind of his friend. His friend. So you have the girl, his mom, Mako, the student. At least have Eddie there. For fuck's sake, he saved the kid's life. Let him get some... At least a nice little moment. Like, thanks for saving my life. I owe you one. They try to put a dot to that little bit of the, the side story. See, at, at the end of the day, I thought this film was okay. It's not my favorite PM Entertainment film. I don't think this is the first one to go to if you get into PM Entertainment. I would say check out Zero Tolerance, check out Riot, check, or even Rage or Recoil with Derek Daniels, check out Last Man Standing with Jeff Wincott, The Atlanta of the Free, T Force. The other PM Entertainment films to check out first. But it was okay. Like I said, Ted Jan Roberts has some nice fight moves. I wish we would have seen a bit more of them. Uh, Aaron Gray, she was fine as the mom. Mako, may you rest in peace. Nice to see him in there. I mean, playing the same type of role he has played a lot. Sensei, mentor type of thing. But he does play that very well. They said there's some funny charm to it. With Marshall T's performance and some of the other stuff. Like I said, I don't know about the Ghost Brother angle. I kind of wish the character of Eddie, they would have done more with that character. Uh, in the third act. Like the stuff I mentioned, but I'd just be repeating myself. But at the same time, it wasn't boring. You did a couple car chases, you did a couple fight scenes. It wasn't anything too... I mean, it stars a kid, but it's not a kid movie. It's not Three Ninjas or anything, so it's not... I appreciate he's trying to tell a little bit of a darker story with the you know, lead kid involved. <clears throat> I mean, overall, it's okay. It's an okay film. <clears throat> overall, I didn't mind it. And at least you did see Tory film and get the shit kid out of him. Or again, his double. But still, a little bit, you know, little goes a long way, I guess. Can't get what you want, but get what you need. So, overall, I had I had some fun with this. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.